Hey, what's going on, guys? My name is Richard, and welcome back to the weekly watch list video. For each of these stocks on my focus list, we'll go through both their fundamentals and MarketSmith, which is sponsoring this video, and we'll also talk about the specific technical setup that I plan to use for each of these. And if you want to enter this week's stock picking contest, make sure you guys follow the rules that are on the screen right now, and let me know your pick down in the comment section below. And if you enjoy my analysis, please go ahead and leave a like on the video. It really does help me out and my channel. But getting right into it, we'll start with Axon, which has been on my list in the past. And overall, you can see it's still consolidating right here after some big gap ups on volume. And overall, looking at the earnings and sales, you can see excellent growth here. Last quarter earnings were up 90%, sales up 27%, and after tax margins up 16.3%. And looking at the annual EPS, you can see in 2020, it's supposed to increase 13%. And in 2021, a further 16%, although the revisions are down. The EPS rating is a 98, the group RS is an A-, the SMR rating is an A, accumulation distribution is a B-, and the overall composite rating is a 98. And looking at the fund ownership, you can see a nice increasing trend over the past few years, and you have one high-quality fund investing in this company. Looking at the RS line and rating, you can see the overall rating is a 91, and the RS line is right near all-time highs. Now looking into 2000, the setup that I plan to use for the stock is either a green dot entry, and if we um, unhide the stochastic here, you can see that I want to see the red line cross above the blue line, and that's what triggers a green dot entry. Or you can see that I've also drawn in this downward trend line right here, so if it crosses above that, that could be another potential entry, or if it crosses above this local pivot right here at 102.40, that could be another potential entry. Next up on the list, we've got Amgen, which has been a true market leader in the past, but now is more of a slower, mature company, which is always good to have in your portfolio to kind of balance out those new IPOs and more volatile assets. Uh, but overall, looking at its earnings and sales, you can see there's not substantial growth here. Earnings were up 17% last quarter, sales up 11%, and after-tax margins were up 40.2%. And looking at the annual EPS, you can see that it's supposed to grow 5% in 2020, and 9% in 2021. The overall EPS rating is at 87, the group RS is an A+, the SMR rating is an A, the commission distribution is a B, and the overall composite rating is a 95. And looking at the fund ownership, you can see an increasing trend over the past two years, and you've got three high quality funds investing in this company. Looking at a chart, you can see that the RS rating is an 81, which is on the lower end, um, but the RS line is right near all time highs, although it is decreasing at the moment as it's pulling back into the pivot from this stage one consolidation. And as for entry setups, I wanna see either a break above this downward trend line right here, or potentially a green dot entry setup. So that is my plan for Amgen. And next up, we've got Bill. Looking at Bill's earnings and sales, you can see that it's not yet profitable, but it does have substantial revenue growth up about 50% the past four quarters. Last quarter sales were up 46%, and after tax margins were negative, down 7.1%. Looking forward to the annual EPS, you can see in 2020 and 2021, it's not supposed to be profitable just yet. The overall EPS rating is a three, the group R is an A minus, the SMR rating is a C, a commission distribution is an A, and the overall composite rating is only an 80. Looking at the fund ownership, you can see an increasing trend over the past few quarters, and you've got three high quality funds investing into this company. And taking a look at the chart, you can see that the RS line is right near all time highs, the overall rating is a very strong 97, and it's forming a cup and handle right here with a standard pivot of 93. Um, and it's just right now near the top of this handle. And as for entry setups, I'm looking for a break above that pivot at 93 or actually a green dot setup if it presents itself next week. Uh, so that is Bill. And next up, we've got InfiCorp or iFi. And looking at the earnings and sales, you can see very strong growth. Last quarter earnings were up 88%, sales up 70%. And after tax margin is up 22.6%. And there's a lot of annual EPS growth expected as well. In 2020, up 66%. In 2021, up 31% with the revisions upward as well. And overall, this group has been very, very strong with a lot of stocks acting well. And they are in the top 20 industry groups, which is always something that I like to see. And looking at the IBD ratings, you can see that the EPS rating is an A2, the group RS is an A, the SMR rating is an A, a commission distribution is an A+. Plus, and the overall composite rating is a 98. And taking a look at the fund ownership, you can see a nice increasing trend, and you've got three high quality funds investing into this company. And looking at the chart, you can see it's in this consolidation right here, and overall the RS rating is a 95, and the RS line is right near all time highs. 
And as for entry setups, it did break out from this consolidation last week. So I want to see a breakout above this high right here at 131.30. Uh, so that is iFi, and next up we've got Lulu. And overall, looking at the earnings and sales, you can see strong growth, but last quarter it was down 70% in terms of earnings, and sales were down as well. Uh, but overall, you can see in 2022, it's supposed to bounce back up, up to $6.27 a share. And overall, the EPS rating is an 81, the group RS is a C+, the SMR rating is a B, accumulation distribution is an A-, and the overall composite rating is a 90. And looking at the fund ownership, you can see a nice increasing trend over the past two years. And you've got four high quality funds investing into this company. And taking a look at the chart, you can see after a strong move up from the bottom, it's consolidated now. The RS line is right near all time highs. And the overall rating is a very strong 92. And as for entry setups, I either want to see a breakout above this point of resistance right here at 318.32, or you could use the short term stochastic cross entry, which was triggered last Thursday. And eventually, I do want to see it challenge all-time highs and break out on volume. And overall, I really like the volume and price action recently, especially since it's increased so strongly since the March bottom. Uh, but that is Lululemon. And next up, we've got a recent IPO, NARI, or Inari Medical Inc. And overall, looking at the earnings and sales, you can see very strong growth here. Earnings were up 550% last quarter, sales up 288%, and after-tax margins were up 15.3%. But looking at the annual EPS, you can see it's not supposed to be profitable within the next few years. The EPS rating is a 76, the group RS and A, the SMR rating is a C, accumulation distribution is not available, and the overall composite rating is a 94. And looking at the fund ownership, you can see 73 funds now own it, and you've got two high quality funds in there as well, along with Fidelity, which is always good to see. And looking at the chart, you can see that it's in its IPO base at this moment. The pivot is 5486. And the RS line is right near all-time highs. That's what that blue dot indicates, which is always a good sign before a breakout. Tesla, for instance, also had this signal before it broke out and increased 40% in just a few days. Um, so that is the fundamentals. And looking at the chart, as I said, I want to see a breakout above this 5486 level on above average volume. And you could also enter on Monday or early next week on the green dot setup if that's in your rules. So that is Neri, and next up we've got Onem. And overall, this is kind of like a mini TDOC, which was on my list last week. Um, and overall, looking at the earnings and sales, you can see it's not yet profitable, but it does have decent sales growth, up about 20, 40, uh, 30 something percent. Last quarter, sales were up 25%, but margins were down 43%. And looking at the annual EPS, you can see it's not supposed to be profitable within the next few years. The EPS rating is a 6, the group RS is a B-, minus. the SMR rating is not available, the commission distribution is a B+, plus. and the overall composite rating is a pretty poor 60. And looking at the fund ownership, you can see an increasing trend, and you've got two high-quality funds investing in this company. And taking a look at the chart, you can see that it's in this cup formation, which is a stage 2, the R sign is going into new all-time ground, and the RS rating is a very strong 97. And as for entry setups, this is actionable based off that cup next week. Um, and that's what I'm looking to use if it breaks out on volume. Uh, so that is Onem. And next up, we've got PCTY. And looking at the earnings and sales, you can see very strong growth. Earnings were up 80% last quarter, sales up 23%, and after tax margins up 27.1%. And looking at the annual EPS, you can see in 2020, it's supposed to increase 21%. But in 2021, the revisions are down 4%. The EPS rating is a 99, the group RS an A+, the SMR rating is an A, the accumulation distribution is a B, and the overall composite rating is a very strong 99. And taking a look at the fund ownership, you can see a nice increasing trend, and you've got four high quality funds investing into PCTY. And taking a look at the chart, you can see it's moved up nicely from the March bottom, the RS line is sloping down, but it's close to all time highs, and the overall rating is an 88. And as for entry setups, I want to see a breakout above this prior high right here or a green dot entry early next week. Uh, so next up, we've got PFSI, um, Penny Mac Financial Services. And overall, looking at their earnings and sales, you can see very strong growth. Last quarter, earnings were up 543%, sales up 191%, and after-tax margins up 42.4%. And looking at the annual EPS, you can see in 2020, it's supposed to increase 103%. But in 2021, it's supposed to be knocked back down 27%. The EPS rating is a 97. The group RS is a B. 
SRR rating is an A, accumulation distribution is a B plus, and the overall composite rating is a 99. And looking at the fund ownership, you can see a nice increasing trend, but you don't have any high quality funds investing into this company. And looking at a chart, you can see it's moved up nicely from the March bottom, and it's forming this tight consolidation here. The R sign is right near all time ground, and the overall rating is a 92. And as for entry setups, I really like the risk reward relationship at this moment. It's right near that 21 EMA, as well as this prior green line. And you did have a green dot and blue dot on the same bar last Friday. So this is actionable next week. Uh, but overall, as with all my entry setups, I want to see an increase on volume and a definitive breakout into new all time ground eventually. Uh, so that is PFSI. And next up, we've got Ping. And this is another recent IPO with very strong earnings and sales growth. The last quarter earnings were up 100%, sales up 22%, and after tax margins up 7.7%. In terms of annual EPS, you can see 2020 is supposed to be down 36%, but it's supposed to rebound in 2021 up 56%. The EPS rating is an 80, the Group R is an A+, the SMR rating is a B, accumulation distribution is a B+, and the overall composite rating is a 97 and looking at the fund ownership, you can see a nice increasing trend, but you don't have any high quality funds investing into this company. And overall, looking at the chart, you can see it's in this brief consolidation period right here after moving up from the March lows. And the overall rating is a 94. And the RS line is right near all time highs with the largest volume coming in on this past Thursday. And as for entry setups, I want to see a breakout above this line resistance right here at 3535, or it is actionable based off a green dot or teal dot entry early next week. And I do really like the volume coming in here. That is a sign of institutional accumulation. Next up, we've got SITM and looking at the earnings and sales, you can see there was nice growth a few quarters ago, uh, but last quarter it wasn't profitable, but sales were up 47%. And looking at the annual EPS, you can see that in 2020, it's not supposed to be profitable, but it is supposed to make 40 cents a share in 2021. The EPS rating is a 53, the group RS and A, SMR rating is a D, accumulation distribution is a very strong A+, and the overall rating is a 98. And looking at the fund ownership, you can see a nice increasing trend, but you don't have any high quality funds investing in this company. Looking at the chart, you can see the RS line is right near all time highs, the overall rating is a 97, and it's forming a nice consolidation right near all time highs. And as for entry setups, I want to see a breakout above this high right here at 5157, or it is actionable based off a green dot setup early next week or the teal dot setup, which was activated this past Thursday. And overall, I really like how tight this has been over the past few weeks. And I really like the signs of institutional accumulation coming in on these huge volume spikes. Uh, so that is SITM. And next up, we've got SSRM, which is a gold stock. And overall, you can see very strong growth in terms of earnings and sales the past few quarters. Last quarter, earnings were up 121%. Sales up 30% and after tax margins up 23.6%. In 2020, the annual EPS is supposed to grow 71% and in 2021, a further 47%, which is quite substantial growth. The overall EPS rating is an 89, the group RS is an A, SMR rating is an A, accumulation distribution is a B plus, and the overall composite rating is a 97. And taking a look at the fund ownership, you can see a nice increasing trend, but you don't have any high quality funds investing into this company. And taking a look at the chart, you can see it's right in this cup, which is a stage one. The overall rating is a 92, and the RS line isn't quite near all-time highs. It does have to make it above this peak right here. And as for entry setups, what I want to see is either a definitive breakout on above average volume, or potentially if it pulls back to the 21 EMA, a bounce off that moving average, or a green dot entry. And next up, we've got Team, which was on my watch list this past week, but is still actionable at this time. And overall, looking at the earnings and sales, you can see decent growth. Last quarter, earnings were up 90%, sales up 33%, and after tax margins up 15%. In 2020, the annual EPS is supposed to grow 28%, and in 2021, a further 23%, with the revisions upward as well. The EPS rating is a 98, the Group RS is an A+, the SMR rating is an A, the Commission Distribution is an A-, and the overall composite rating is a very strong 99 and taking a look at the fund ownership, you can see a nice increasing trend. You've got a whole bunch of high quality funds investing in this company. And as for entry setups, what I want to see is either a pullback to this downward trend line, then a green dot entry, or if it breaks out on above average volume. Uh, so that is team. And next up, we've got Vertex, which was also on my list last week. 
And overall, you can see very substantial sales and earnings growth the past few quarters, and it is accelerating, which is great to see. Last quarter earnings were up 125%, sales up 76%, and margins up 44.5%. And looking at the annual EPS, you can see in 2020, it's supposed to grow 68%, and in 2021, a further 23%, with the revisions upward as well. Looking at the IBD ratings, the EPS rating is a 99, the Group RS is an A+, the SMR rating is an A, the Commission Distribution is a B, and the overall composite rating is a very strong 99. And taking a look at the fund ownership, you can see a nice increasing trend, and you have four high-quality funds investing in this company. Looking at the chart, you can see it's right near the pivots of this flat base right here. The RS rating is an A9, and the RS line isn't near all-time highs. It does have to make it above this peak, um, but mostly it's consolidating over the past few days. And overall, it's forming a formation of higher lows right here, which is constructive. And as for specific entry points, what I'm looking to use is a green dot setup or other short term scouts across early next week or for breaks above this 295.55 level on above average volume. And finally, we've got XP Inc. And if you look at its earnings and sales, you can see quite substantial growth. Last quarter earnings were up 92%, sales up 39%, and after tax margins up 23.9%. And in terms of annual EPS, you can see it is supposed to drop in 2020 down 39%, but it is supposed to grow 34% in 2021. The overall EPS rating is a 99, the Group R is an A-, minus. the SMR rating is an A, the Humidation Distribution is an A-, minus. and the overall composite rating is a 98. Taking a look at the fund ownership, you can see it isn't quite at the high of 329, but it is increasing over this past quarter. And overall, you also don't have any high-quality funds investing into XP. And taking a look at the chart, you can see it's above its kind of IPO high right here. It's consolidating nicely. And overall, the RS rating is a 94, and the RS line is right near all-time highs. And overall, as for specific entries, I'm looking for a break of this downward trend line right here on above average volume, or potentially a shorter term stochastic cross. And once again, I really like how it's been holding this 21 EMA and how it's so close to this prior green line, which is a potential area of support. So that is XP, and overall this is one of my top three setups, and I also like SITM as well as AAXN. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and please remember to leave a like down below if you did, and subscribe if you're new to the channel, and also remember to comment down below your pick for the stock picking contest. Uh, but that's it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. Best of luck next week, and I'll see you guys in future videos.